one more question, I think. Senator. Yeah, I was just uh, <coughs> curious about that VA hospital. Do anybody know anything about that? Yeah. I okay. <laughs> what, are they going to complete that hospital? Uh, when is the day that the date that they have set? Uh, shooting that to, to open the hospital. Yeah. So um, once in a while, some of the issues we've run into are indeed federal. And for those of you who've been following, we have been having a promise of a new VA medical complex, including a hospital, for quite a while. And um, it's a really good question. The project is very, very behind. Uh, it's very, very over budget. Uh, it's over a billion dollars over budget. But right now, um, it, there was a whole big backstory on, on getting funding for this. It looks like the funding to deal with the overages on the project is now appropriated with an estimate through 2017. Uh, so right now, if, if all else continued to go well, we might finally see this project happen by 2017. Now, the things to watch, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that there aren't more cost overruns. It doesn't necessarily guarantee that there aren't more delays. Um, but right now, the, the bottom line answer to your question is they have, there is now an appropriated totality of the funds that are there that could get the project completed and um, track potentially for 2017. Um, and for those of you who were first following this, um, you know, it was initially supposed to be completed a long time ago uh, and for a lot less money. So that's where it is right now. Keep watching it because you know this project has had a lot of problems all the way from the beginning on it and I don't think we're necessarily truly in the clear yet um, and we'll keep you posted on, on where they are but we did have at least um, um, and this was kind of interesting tied up as Boehner was stepping down and there was new leadership that was getting in so the U.S. Senate uh, was actually able to introduce unanimously uh, the bill to get the remaining funding that was needed on the project, um, and that through the House. But we'll have to watch and see where that project goes. It's obviously a very big deal. Um, it's it, not only for the veterans and the families that are in Aurora and the region, but I mean by the region, I mean the state, and I mean throughout the Rocky Mountain West. This is absolutely critical and very, very overdue. Yes. I was wondering um, how do you feel about um, the Guantanamo Bay prisoners being brought here and um, President Obama bypassing Congress in order to close Guantanamo Bay? So, um, we usually use this time for constituents instead of partisan political trackers. All right. And so are there any other constituents with questions? Yes, good question. Yeah. Bob Barton, sitting here next to this little girl makes me, well, I just feel compelled to say something. You talked about education. Here's the benefactor of what you're talking about. And I look at this panel here, four women. Next year, this time, the 15th president of my lifetime will be elected, 15th. In those years, let me tell you something. We go, and I go back a ways. You wouldn't have had four women sitting up here a few years ago, not too many years ago. They'd be all men. Not only would they be all men, they'd all be white men. Okay? Things have changed. Thank the Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> now, the bad news. We promised this wouldn't be Coming promised. out here two years ago, three years ago, my first meeting was one of these. And I asked the question of the panel, how much do you depend, how much do you expect from a Democratic Party in order to be elected or re-elected? And all of you looked at your shoes. That was not a good sign. I understand that there are certain regulations and rules uh, because we're in the building we're in that you can't run around with the Democrat signs and that kind of stuff. I don't particularly agree with it, but that's the rule. And we'll follow the rules. 
But when we leave here, I'm talking to the audience here, I'm not talking to the panel. When we leave here, do we understand what we're up against? Having these really wealth, wonderful, qualified people on the ballot, is that gonna be enough next November? Is it gonna be enough? It wasn't enough in my district this week when our Democrat candidate was beating 80 to 20, 80% to 20% right here in Arapahoe County. That was the disparity. How serious is that? Well, it's just a few thousand votes. Just a few thousand, not that much. It'll be made up here, it'll be made up there. Should I be content with that? I don't think so, because we got nine uh, vote, what do you call them, coming up, when, uh, resting on the success of next November's presidential campaign. Nine votes from the state of Colorado could be the difference in whether this little girl is going to see the education that she and have it available to her that she deserves, that we have. Okay? This is Next year's election is the most the important is election of my lifetime. For you to be Go ahead. Artisan talk. What? This is inappropriate audience, inappropriate time. This is a town hall. This is for all parties to come and talk to their representatives. It is not a time for you to start making political talk about voting Dems. I don't know how you can separate so maybe we Yourself. should adjourn and let we'll everyone and let everyone have their own conversation. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that.